Thank you, Kirsten. Sure is a pleasure to be here today. I'll tell you, I could hardly get to sleep last night in anticipation of coming to this meeting. As Gladden said, this is the largest gathering of liberty-minded folks that we've been able to put together uh, since our inception that I can recall. And I've been to almost every single meeting that's ever been since the August or, no, I guess it was the July weekend uh, at the State House with uh, Judge Napolitano as a speaker, and we had about 10,000 people gathered there. If you all remember that, that was an exciting day. That really got my blood rushing and, and the tears running down from the patriotic uh, sense of everyone that was there to stand up for liberty and freedom. Uh, just to take off a little bit, I'm just going to be a little short with you here, but to continue on with what Ted and John and everyone's been saying. Now that we get our candidates elected, um, my topic is meet your area candidates. Now, wherever you're located, the candidates that you supported, whether it's township trustees, your city council, your um, commissioners, your mayor, um, your state representative. Um, do we have Rick Geyer here? Rick Geyer. He ran in the 88th against, you might have all heard about this one, but uh, Rex Damschroeder was, he ran his four terms and then he took off for a period of time and then uh, two terms back, this would have been his third term in his second cycle, um, we ran our Tea Party guy against him uh, early on, I think that was in 2010, and uh, we weren't, he showed well, uh, Bill Rayback was his name, uh, but he still lost. Um, Rex Damschroeder won again and then was reelected very easily in this last election, this primary, he failed to sign <laughs> his petition to be a candidate. And he's, he's only done this four times a few years back, and then he's in his, this was his third cycle in his second eight-year term. So that really opened the door, and Tom Z got on the phone to me the very next day, and he said, Jim, this guy, Rex Damschroeder, we got an open seat here. We've got a write-in opportunity here. So I called Rick, Rick Geyer, out of Sandusky County, he's a trustee there, and he said, I'll be right down there, and he got on the ballot. Well, the Republicans in the community, when Rex Damschroeder fell by the wayside, they put up a guy by the name of Bill Reinecke, who's a big car dealer in, uh, in our Sandusky County, uh, Finley area, Hancock, Seneca County, and his family's well known. Well, and he had a lot of money behind him, uh, he, he ran, jumped at the opportunity to run. Well, Rick Geyer was on there, so there was a three-way write-in. But Rex Ramschroeder couldn't run because, in the write-in because he failed to meet the requirements for initially, he missed the cutoff date, whatever, because of not signing properly. So he put his wife up. And, uh, of course, that didn't stand well with anybody. Put your wife up. He would never let her speak but she was going to be the candidate, and then the Central Committee was going to turn it over to him. She was going to turn it over to him formally. So anyway, well, needless to say, uh, we, we did support Rex Damschroeder in his previous elections, and as a result, we, we, uh, he came to our meetings. We, uh, our group had, meets twice a month, and we, uh, every time there was a primary or a general election, we would have our candidate nights and try to bring in our local candidates as well as our state representatives and and even uh, we brought in uh, Jim Jordan prior to him being our district congressman and uh, so we got to know the different people and we actively sought out them to come and let them know who we were and uh, when you get involved in this political system as we were all novices a few years back um, we had to learn about what the system was about, and that's what we're still doing. But we had to start reading the Constitution to really know what our rights and liberties were, that we, were, we knew we were losing them, but, oh, how did we back that up? Well, anyway, we got directly involved. So uh, what happened was with this Rex Damschroeder election, we had Rick Geyer ran, and he had uh, close to 900 votes 
Now keep in mind, Rex Damschroder's wife was on the ballot. So people, he put his wife's name, Damschroder, on there, and the local uh, um, Board of Elections said, well, if it's Damschroder, we'll accept it. But if it's Rex Damschroder, we'll throw it out. They did, if they forgot his wife's name or whatever. But anyway, the corruption is run rampant. But anyway, uh, I know my time's running out and I got one more here to go, but uh, Rick Iyer was able to knock out the incumbent by the same number of votes. It was very close. But had Rick not run and participated in this opportunity as a write-in candidate, uh, he would, Rex Damschroder would have been reelected, or his wife, and then turned back over to him. But as it turned out, because of that participation of that third individual, split the ballot, and uh, Bill Reinecke ended up winning that election in the primary. So now, what do we do? Well, we go meet with Bill Reinecke. And I'm also a member of our, we have a local John Birch Society chapter. And we always make it a point to go out with a packet to these candidates and let them know what we want them to do, and what they should be aware of is these issues. And so we put together a half hour meeting. Uh, it wasn't myself, but it was our chapter president and met with him. And then just this week, I met with him again about coming to our meeting. And he wants to have a private meeting with me about, whoa, I know the Tea Party's strong in Seneca County. We've got a viable organization. More people attend our meetings than any other organization in the county. So that, that's kind of exciting. So anyway, this is the rapport that we have to get to know these people. Well, just one example, I know I'm running a little short here, but one example was the uh, Constitutional Convention, balanced budget amendment that everybody might be familiar with. Um, we call it the CONCON. As a result of my inner... Uh, Reaction or interrelationship with um, Rex Damschroder, he called me up and he said, Jim, come on down to Columbus for lunch. I want you to meet with these people that are coming in to, uh, they want us to have a constitutional amendment in Ohio. And I said, whoa, I'll be right down there because I'm totally against it. And whether you agree with that or not, some people in this room support the other way or not. But he called me down and then I ended up, was able to go down and give testimony, oral testimony before him. We put him off for a year until they finally re-voted on this thing. But we need to have this relationship. So meet your candidates, get to know them, let them know who you are. And uh, I, sometimes I get a little short, so I threaten <laughs> Mr. Damschroder. I said, I want you to know that I'm treasurer for the Ohio Liberty Coalition in the state. And if you vote for this issue, I'm gonna tell every single person in the state of Ohio what you did to undermine our Constitution. Needless to say, you know, now he's going to be gone, but, and he looked at me, get Jim down here. We, we want him to give some moral testimony, and that's how this stuff goes. So you have to give a little bit, you have to be authoritative when you know what your rights are and what you want to stand up for. The next one was, and the last one, the biggest one, it's current events. Two years ago, when all the tea parties were being uh, attacked and not allowed their 501c4s or threes or whatever and the other conservative groups. Guess who came, wanted to have a meeting with myself and Marsha Rexroth? Mr. Jim Jordan. He comes and he meets with us. We have coffee and I said, Jim, you're just the guy I want to see. We've got this whole list of these problems, not only Ohio, but tea parties throughout the whole nation that are being undermined by the IRS and not able to secure their 50C1 not-for-profit status. He said, wow. Three weeks later, it broke with the IRS. And of course, Daryl Issa. And now we got Trey Gowdy. And we got some people there. <laughs> you know, now having these interactions, and I don't want to take, take credit for any of this, but to be involved in that process on a national basis now, that gives me a good feeling. And you know, I'm a little chubby. Uh, and about five years ago, just before all this transpired, I said, well, 
My wife says, you've got to go to Weight Watchers with me. So I said, okay. So I go to Weight Watchers, and I go that, do that for about three months or something. But one of the things they said, what are the ten shortest, what are the, uh, what is it? It's the ten most important two-letter words. That was their motto. If it is to be, it is up to me. So if I don't take that step and step out to do what I think is right, it's never going to happen, is it? So when we stick together as a group of people that want to stand up, step out, do what's right, we become winners. And we do have an impact, and we are effective. And I'm just so excited to be here with all you other Liberty Believers. <laughs> yeah. oh, it's just it's fantastic. So I want to thank you, and that's it. <laughs>